Hello, space flight enthusiasts. Well, as you just saw, the Starship development program has taken another step backward. Not a huge step backward, hopefully, but nevertheless, this was not a good development for the Block 3 or Version 3 Super Heavy Booster, an absolutely crucial new feature to the Version 3 Starship that's equipped with 35 Raptor engines as opposed to the 33 three of the previous model plus an integrated vented interstage for smoother hot staging, three grid fins reduced from four for weight savings, enhanced thermal protection, and taller tank sections for increased propellant capacity. All of these things were supposed to make this booster a big step up for Starship and finally allowing the rocket to realize its 100 ton low earth orbit capacity and perhaps even more than that. But unfortunately, on November 21st, in the middle of the night, the B-18 suffered a test anomaly, the first cryogenic proof test that it went through. What does this mean for the future of the program and especially for HLS and NASA's ambitions of landing on the moon by 2028? We're going to find out right now. Okay, so here's what we know so far. On the evening of November 20th, B-18 rolled out from Mega Bay 1 to Massey's on a self-propelled modular transporter, also known as the SPMT. An initial setup included tank venting lines and sensors. SpaceX announced via X, quote, Booster 18, the first Super Heavy V3, is beginning pre-launch testing. The first operations will test the booster's redesigned propellant propellant systems and its structural strength. And at 4 a.m. Central Time on November 21st, liquid oxygen loading commenced. Independent video from Starship Gazer, who by the way, I've included some of his photos on here along with Lab Padre's footage. Please make sure to support both of these fantastic Starship watchers. They captured the anomaly at exactly 4.04 a.m. Central Time. Witnesses described a sharp bang followed by venting flames, suggesting a rapid overpressurization or seal failure in the LOX tank. In the immediate aftermath, the lower LOX tank section catastrophically failed, crumpling inward in an implosive, explosive event. Flames and vapor clouds engulfed the base, but the test stand sustained minimal damage, or at least it appeared to. There were no injuries, and the site was evacuated per protocol, B-18 was stabilized and rolled back to Mega Bay 1 for assessment. The reports point to a propellant system anomaly, likely a faulty cryogenic valve or weld imperfection in the LOX tank dome, causing uncontrolled pressure buildup during chill down. Version 3's higher pressure design, which is up to 6.2 bar versus the 5.2 bar in version 2, amplified the issue. Unlike explosive failures such as Ship 29's RUD in 2023, this is more of a soft failure with no fireball but a severe structural deformation. SpaceX's rapid iteration philosophy means that data from embedded sensors will inform fixes for B-19. However, the event has delayed IFT-12, the first flight of the Version 3 Starship, by weeks at least. Now, of course, we don't have any official explanation for the anomaly, but preliminary speculation points to a valve, weld, or seal failure, as I suggested before, causing uncontrolled pressure buildup. And once again, the version 3 tanks have more pressure being applied to them than the earlier tanks in order to handle more propellant and possible involvement of new version 3 features, such as the large internal downcomer or transferred 
tube for propellant flow, side mounted header tanks, or what are called COPVs, composite overwrapped pressure vessels under the chines. The down cover appears intact and likely the only thing keeping the booster upright post failure. So this isn't an explosion in an explosive sense, as I'm sure you've all seen. No fireball as it was pre-ignition and there were no engines on this thing anyway, so there couldn't have been an ignition, but a catastrophic breach. Unlike other failures, the damage, of course, is irreparable for flight. B-18 is going to be scrapped. And even though Elon Musk is talking about B-19 crushing it, this kind of a failure, in my opinion, is cause for concern because we haven't seen a full-scale booster cryo failure at Massey's since the early prototypes, even before there was a Massey's actually, such as Mark 1's 2019 tank burn or SN3's 2020 implosion. So that being the case, we really haven't seen these kinds of pressure tests fail with a super heavy booster for quite some time. And if this is happening again, it could mean that there is some underestimating going on in terms of the amount of pressure that this booster is going to be subjected to with all of the additional propellant or some of the propulsion system modifications it could be a design flaw rather than some kind of failed valve. Hopefully, it's just a single component, a single valve that was the problem and not an overall structural problem. That being the case, though, there has to be an investigation. SpaceX must conduct a mishap investigation analyzing sensor data from the test, and the FAA will review it for launch licensing Past ground anomalies have delayed flights by one to 10 months or so, so we need to expect a four to eight week hold for clearance. Keep in mind, according to the recent leak documentation that SpaceX delivered to NASA, the anticipation is, is that the version three Starship will be ready to conduct a low Earth orbit propellant transfer test, a refueling test that is, by the summer of 2026. An incident like this is going to make a feat like that a very difficult prospect at best. And those kinds of delays will lead to a delay of Starship's eventual unmanned landing test on the moon, which was supposed to take place in the middle of 2027, according to updated documents and according to updated delays, eventually leading to a human rated landing in September of 2028. And this anomaly is going to make that already incredibly difficult to achieve schedule even more difficult. Again, in my opinion, practically impossible. If we are going to beat China to the moon, I think we need another alternative. And that's something I've been saying for quite some time. As promising as Starship is, and as much as I think that this super rocket will eventually allow us to put large numbers of personnel and huge amounts of payload onto the surface of the moon, supporting a substantial lunar base, if not a lunar city, those are the kinds of objectives for the long term. For the short term, we need to find something else. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or with a piece of merchandise. Details in the description. Until next time, stay angry about space.